Very good morning to you, Michael. OK, uh, have your nerves calmed down now? Or what, what was that like, watching that quarter-final unfold? Good morning, Rob. Well, we were all hoping before that we were going to see what we saw. I mean, the, the penalties were absolutely magnificent. And you talk about pressure and how are they going to cope with it. Well, those five guys who stepped up, they looked like they were never under any pressure. And it's bizarre. I mean, I know they take penalties in the Premier League, but I always say it's quite easy to step up and take a penalty. It's not so easy to step up and take a penalty and score. It's, it's that pressure, the nerves. And have you got the calmness and quality to put the, the ball in the back of the net under, under major pressure? And that's what these guys were under. Even when Trent stepped up for, to take the fifth penalty to, to send us into the semi-final, the way he put that on, the conviction and the power, and to put it so high up into the, uh, the top corner, great finish, but every single one of those penalties... You're just looking and thinking, please show me the calmness that you've showed when you take the penalties for your, for your clubs. And they did that and credit to them because it's, as I said, it's not easy under, the, under those circumstances. Yeah, obviously much has been made of Sackers because of the history there, Trent Alexander-Arnold's because it was the last one. But right from the very beginning, Cole Palmer, the pressure on him, take that first one. He hadn't been on the pitch for the entire time. Incredible. Do you notice, because penalty shootouts haven't been kind to England in the past, is there a complete different mindset now for these players? Are they doing a different routine? Is something different about them? And therefore, how much credit should go to Gareth Southgate and, and the coaching team? Well, you can talk about practising and repetition and doing it on the training pitch. We used to do it regular. And I could step up and take a penalty under no pressure. And as soon as that comes in, you've got the whole nation behind you. And I think we have to mention Saka there, not just to take in the penalties performance in the game, but after what he went through in, in the last year rolls, when he misses a penalty and we're, we're losing the final, to have the, the confidence and, and bravery. That's what it is. It's bravery because you have to step up with everyone on your... On your, on your back and they, there you see him and the relief and his smiles. If anyone deserves it, he, he did last night and I thought his performance was magnificent. But uh, we, we saw when he missed in the Euros and then he started taking penalties for Arsenal. You're thinking, wow, this boy at a young age has got serious courage and, uh, and can deal with high expectations. So I think this group of players, which I've always said under Gareth, they always go out there and express themselves and look like they play with no fear. And I think we saw that in, in the penalties. I do believe it. I mean, I don't think we've been anywhere near our best from, from where we are. And we're in the semi-final of, of the European Championship. So I think there's major positives that we can take this morning. Yeah. Uh, nowhere near our best is, is what you said there. W was it a glimpse of Saka perhaps showing his form in an England shirt that he shows in an Arsenal shirt last night? And if that's the case, then why aren't others perhaps do you feel showing the form that they show in the Premier League at these Euros? I think it's all about timing, Rob. And, and I was, I think I was on here on Monday morning saying, could Saka have been one of those players that were taken off for, for Palmer in, in, in games early on in, in the group stages? But you talk about timing, you talk about coming, coming in, into a tournament and turning it on. And I was delighted the way he took that, that ball, took it inside, which you see him, and he put it in the far corner and it hit the post. We see that week in, week out for, for, uh, from Saka when he does it for, for Arsenal. But you have to take the game by the scruff of the net. And we were under pressure. When we went 1-0 down, we were under serious pressure. And someone had to grab, grab the game by the scruff of the net. And Saka did that. You have to take that. He could have passed it. He could have put it back into Declan Rice in the middle of the... No. Take that courage, take that decision and go, I'm going to either put the ball in the back or the, a miss and you have to take and, and live, live and die by your decision. Sometimes right and thank you for him last night. He took that. We saw Declan Rice take a shot just after. Great save by Sommer. Have a go because we've tried to play intricate passes in and around the box and we haven't just found that little bit of magic yet. So shoot, put the opposition under pressure, see if they can deal with that and it just brings a little bit of belief. But Saka last night, offensively, and defensively, I thought it was magnificent. I really, really do. Yeah, we, we've got to talk about Ivan Tony and his penalty. Can you explain to me how on earth that is possible um, to strike a ball when you're not looking at it under such pressure, eyeballing the goalkeeper and, and slide? I, I, I don't know how you do that. How, how do you do that? Well, we talk about Court Palmer as being as, as cool as ice, but I mean, that is unbelievable by Ivan Tony. He's, he's a penalty specialist. 
proofs in the pudding. We see it last night under pressure. I'm sitting there with with my lad and some parents. We're watching it and thinking, wow, are these players going to be able to do what they do for the club level and have that audacity, arrogance, if we can so I think it's class. It's unbelievable. There's a technique of taking penalties in that calmness. And the way he, he stared Sommer out and then just puts it in the corner, I'm thinking, I could quite easily miss the ball if I'd have done that. But he steps up and gets such a good contact and Sommer got nowhere near it. it it's, it's a technique and it's unbelievably confident to, to go into uh, and take a penalty like that. Yeah. Uh, Gareth Southgate responded a call for changes in, in yesterday's game. He went for a back three. Were those changes a success in your eyes? If they were to be playing Turkey, perhaps they would have stayed with a back three, but playing the Dutch, do they stick with that going forward? No, I think we'll go to probably a, a back four. I, 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 I said it on Monday morning, Rob, that when you're coming up against a, a Swiss team in, in the way they play, I thought we'd try to match them up. I just thought the personnel would have been a little bit different. I thought Saka would have gone on the left and Trent would have come in at right wing back. However, he, he, he went in a different way that probably threw an awful lot of us. Um, but I, I liked where Foden was playing. I liked it. he still had the attacking threat that we have. But I think Saka, the way he started the game, the way he was getting at their fullback. And sometimes you see it can be defensive having a back five or a back three. Ultimately, he got us on the front foot. He gave Trippier an opportunity to get high and wide, Saka high and wide, and, and the front three an opportunity to press on as well. So I'm, I'm not too sure he'll go the, the same against uh, the Netherlands. Had it been Turkey, they were, sometimes you try and match opposition up to try and nullify their strengths. But I think teams that play us are certainly scared. I mean, we haven't hit the heights that I expected is to hit in the final third. That's still clear. We're not having enough, enough shots and goal. Hopefully after last night, we will. Declan Rice, Saka getting the goal from outside the box. Shoot, we've got players that strike the ball, hit the target, keep the make, make the keeper make him a save. And you never know, a deflection might happen because as I say, this intricate football in and around the box hasn't been way good enough what we expected for, from our attacking players. OK, let's pick up on that because every silver lining has a cloud doesn't it? Uh, what are we seeing with Harry Kane? Why are we seeing it? And is the unthinkable perhaps a thought in that he could be dropped for the semi-final? Well, it's not a thought from me from dropping uh, our captain, our main, uh, main number nine. Yes, he's been nowhere near the expectations of, of the, the standards that Harry set for, for many, many years and scoring goals. But he's dropping too deep. But my concern, it's not major a concern if he drops deep. We just haven't had runners in behind. That is the problem. If everyone comes to the ball, it gives the opposition a chance to squeeze, get up the field. You always have to stretch the game. I mean, defenders don't like running in behind. If Harry comes off you as a centre half to pick the ball up, someone then has to go and play as, an, uh, as, as a number nine and stretch him behind to, to occupy their, their centre half. So, I mean, Harry hasn't been anywhere near good enough. But if he gets an opportunity, I still think he'll score goals. And I still, for me, it has to stay in the team. I know we've got Ollie Watkins. I know we've got Ivan Tony, And I've, I've said that players who come off the bench have to have an impact. And I certainly, I certainly think we're seeing that with, with every player that has come off the bench this tournament. And, and one certainly that we need to mention is Cole Palmer. Mm, yeah. Why doesn't he get a starting place? I, I, I think... There's so many fans out there, myself included, that was probably calling for Cole Palmer to be starting games. Who do you drop? And, and when they come on, do they make an impact? Yeah, I think every substitution has made an impact. Even from Jared Bowen in the first game when, it, when he came on, the defensive work that he, that he did. And we haven't seen him since. Anthony Gordon coming on in games, we haven't seen an awful lot of him. But the players that do come on are having an impact. Gareth can only pick 11 players. He sends a team out that he thinks he's good enough to to win the football matches, but there's periods in games where we're under a little bit of pressure and the players need to be changed. And I think we've seen the right substitutions, even last, last night with Luke Shaw coming on for Conza, who I thought was brilliant and deserves a mention coming in for Mark Gahey. But he's taken off. You bring Shaw on. I mean, Gareth gets criticised for making substitutions. It's not an easy job. We all think we can pick a different team. But at this moment in time, he's getting the results and we're in the semi-final. I think that has to be a positive and everyone has to get behind Gareth and this team, because they feel as though they've been under a little bit of scrutiny. We all know if you don't perform to the levels that we expect to, and that's probably not expect, that they expect to, and the bar that they've set in previous tournaments is so high, as a nation of pundits and fans and people in the social media, 
that's because of how good they've been in previous tournaments. Yeah. So uh, where are you at the moment? Because there, there were those full of doubt in this tournament, critical of England. Does that improve Switzerland performance answer those critics or are there still more questions to be asked? Well, there's always question marks when you play for England and, and, and we're five games in and I expected us to be playing a lot better than what we are. But we're in the semi-final. Uh, and, and when I, I spoke with pre-tournament, I said we would never play well for seven games. We now only have to play well for two games. Uh, and I think we're going to have to improve against the Netherlands. Uh, they, they're very good at in, in the way they attack. But I think we can hurt any team. I think we've got no no one to fear. Teams fear us because on paper, we've got arguably the best squad. I think Spain Spain could beat France. Uh, they're being the team for, for me that you look and go, they're, they've probably been the best team so far. But now it comes down to two games. Can we perform to the level that we know this group of players can do and can we win it? And I still believe we've got as, as a great opportunity. I believe we had an opportunity before and I never lost that, lost that faith because of the quality that we've got in that, in, in that group. Yeah, and that most probably adds to that argument you were making about Harry Kane. The, the Netherlands would far rather see him not in the team, wouldn't it? So it is them in the semi-finals. What have you made of their tournament so far? What are the threats that they will pose England? Well, they, they were my uh, outsiders before, before the tournament. I looked at them and thought, this is a group of players where we see a lot of them in, in, in the Premier League. I mean, Gakpo has been brilliant. Uh, a little bit of a surprise for me to, to see how well he's, he's took to, to, to this tournament. Uh, I like the way they are defensively with Freeze, uh, De Fry and then um, um, Virgil van Dijk. And they make the change with Nathan Aki that Mickey van der Ven comes on for the pace when maybe Aki gets tired. So the mate, Jay Simmons, in the, in the middle... I like them. Depay, who, starts up, who started up top, and then the move, Bergwijn. They've got players. They're attacking. That's how they play. The, I mean, last night against Turkey, I thought Turkey were were, were very good. And when they were 1-0 up, could have took, if they'd have took the chances, Netherlands could quite easily have been out. But as soon as they got back to 1-1, they had the initiative and took the game to, to Turkey, and Turkey just went in in the end. But this is going to be another tough test. Of course, it is. we're a semi-final of the European Championships. There's some top players in in that squad but I wouldn't swap their squad for hours, that's for sure. Yeah. I just want to see where you are on the, on the range scale, finally. Uh, are you forgetting the lyrics, humming or belting out full blast footballs coming home? Which, where, where are you on that range? Well, it was humming um, some way through the game last night, but certainly at the end when we scored the penalties, it was getting bellowed out in, uh, in the front room with a, uh, a, few, a, few, uh, a few parents and a few of my, uh, my boys' friends, that's for sure. Wonderful. And if you're a neighbour of the Dawson household, we apologise profusely uh, for that singing. Uh, Michael, lovely to, to see you as always. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Rob.